This weekend, Zack Snyder debuted his first non-DC film in like 10 years on Netflix. Yes! So today we're gonna rank all nine Zack Snyder films. We're gonna do it a little bit different. I'm doing my first tier ranking. So let's talk about it. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Let me know what do you think of all of Zack Snyder's films. And today, as I mentioned before, I'm doing my very first tier ranking, so I barely know what I'm doing. So I went over and I watched Austin Burke's tier ranking of the Zack Snyder film so I could learn exactly what I'm supposed to do. Once this video is done, be sure to check out his tier ranking of the Zack Snyder films. With that said, let's get started. And for this, I'm going to go through the films release order so we're kicking things off with dawn of the dead for me this is a solid film on its own right while being a great 21st century reimagining of the dawn of the dead story part of what makes it so strong is the script was written by james gunn so you have his wit his creativity combined with Zack snyder visuals and kind of the way that he just makes the action, visceral, you feel present in the moment with all these zombies swarming you. Right off the bat, the movie kicks off with this fantastic opening that establishes the world. You see it decline, bunch of creativity in the way the shots are done. And you have like a car driving out of a neighborhood with the camera locked on it. So you just see the world falling apart as this lady tries to escape to save herself. And another thing that just makes this movie really stand out in the genre is you have a great set of diverse characters who respond very differently to the situation that they are in. So there's a bunch about this things that I just want to put it in that awesome category. It's very close to the awesome category for me, but I actually got to knock it down to just the great category because it does a couple things that throw it off for me. First off, anytime you do a horror movie, you're always trying to find that line of what's horrifying and what's too far for different audience members. For me, the pregnancy bit, that went too far. Second thing is the ending of the movie. Obviously, it's a zombie apocalypse film. It's supposed to be bleak. Where it goes in the mid post credit stuff just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I don't like those types of endings. For me, they undermine everything we went through over the last 30 minutes. And so I don't care for the ending of it. Puts it leaves it on a bad note. Therefore, kind of knocks it back from being full blown awesome to just being great, which is still great. And Dawn of the Dead was followed up with 300, another iconic Zack Snyder film, and really started to establish Zack Snyder as this divisive director, because a ton of people watched 300, and they just went, that was awesome, and a bunch of other people went, what? There's no plot, it was just a bunch of guys in their underwear getting killed for two hours, what was that? I am in that first category, and we'll put this one right up top, tell you right out of the gate, this is in the awesome category for me. It has a very simple objective as a film, and it accomplishes that objective. It creates this very tight bond between this group of troops where you know any one of them would die for Leonidas, and Leonidas says he would die for any one of them. It just gets this concept of brotherhood of masculinity, and then just captures it with just absolutely stunning visuals. At its core, it is simple, simple concept, but it's executed perfectly. It's not going to be a movie for everyone, and that's perfectly fine. One of the things I say about Zack Snyder movies all the time, they're like spicy food. Some people love spicy food. I love spicy food. I want to put spice on everything and make it as hot as possible. My wife can't eat any spicy food. And therefore, it's not a matter, is it good or bad in a certain sense? It's just a matter of taste. I love spicy food. And that's what 300 is. It is spicy food with a distinct style that captures an aesthetic, a vibe, an energy. And people that like this sort of thing love this movie. Other people, they don't know what, the, what this is. They don't know what they're experiencing. Like, ah, this is not for me. Totally get it best for me. This one goes in the awesome category. I love the experience that this movie delivers. 
And that brings us to Watchmen, Zack Snyder's adaptation of possibly the most celebrated graphic novel of all time. For decades, the author of Watchmen claimed that Watchmen was not a graphic novel that could be adapted into film. In fact, didn't want his name attached to it. Makes it so tricky is that when Alan Moore wrote and designed Watchmen, he had the graphic novel experience in mind. The story plays out the way someone reads this. So where he chose to put on the next frame in light of when you turn the page and the way you'd actually see things a little bit in advance and what all of that stuff, he was trying to factor into it with all these sidebars and everything. It's the tricks and tools for a graphic novel, not for a movie. So how do you adapt that into a film? And I think for the most part, Zack Snyder did about as good of a job as you can expect of adapting Watchmen into a film. It's just a very difficult story to adapt. On the positive side, it is jam-packed with stunning Zack Snyder visuals, as, as you would expect. The source material provided him with a bunch of complex characters with intricate motivations, a story with layers upon layers and themes interwoven inside of it. And I think Zack Snyder did the best he could bringing that to the big screen. The theatrical version certainly feels like they're trying to squish a three hour and 15 minute movie into two and a half hours. I would say that this one is in that very good to great category. Depending on which version you watch, it's kind of right in there. It's not fully awesome. I don't think it can fully capture the magic that is the graphic novel. I think there are a few too many Snyderisms in it and a few points in time where kind of his choice in music is kind of odd, in particular in a sex scene with Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah playing. There's some stuff that's like, okay, Zach, I don't think that quite worked. In general, though, it's about as good as you can do trying to take a very difficult graphic novel and adapting it to the big screen. Then after three hard R movies, he decides to go in the opposite direction with Legend of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul. And this is a movie that I hadn't seen until just a couple months ago when I did my Zack Snyder ranking. I really wasn't sure what to expect because for the last what, 17 years, I've been watching these R-rated or dark comic book movies from Zack Snyder, and then I knew 10 years ago he did a children's book, or adapted a children's book into a movie that was rated PG, and I just didn't know how exactly that was going to work, and the answer is I don't think it really did work all that well. So for me, I'm going to put this one in kind of the misfire category. It's not fully awful. It's not bottom tier for me. But it's very close in a certain sense, because while the animation is stunning, the action is in typical Zack Snyder form, visceral and intense. It's in a children's movie, so it, it doesn't it doesn't fit there. It doesn't work. His bag of tricks that the stuff that made 300 awesome, when you apply that to a children's story and you have owls like clawing each other in battle armor and it it doesn't feel right. It's not quite as exciting because it's not doesn't belong there. It's kind of like I like pickles. I like ice cream. But if you put a pickle in my ice cream, neither one of them is going to taste right. And that's what this violent Zack Snyder action taking place in this owl story felt like for me. Likewise, it kind of is trying to tell this big epic story. And it just, it just didn't fully come together in a way that you could like connect with the characters. And so while you could watch these owl fight sequences and be like, that's a very cool owl fight sequence, didn't fit inside the movie. The story didn't flow all that well for me. So just in general, a movie where you can see Zack Snyder's skill on display, but a misfire for me. And then we get Sucker Punch, maybe the most Zack Snyder of all Zack Snyder movies. And this is probably the greatest looking bad movie of all time. Without question, I'm gonna put this one in the bottom category. It's very ambitious. I can appreciate what he was going for, but I do not think this movie works and I didn't really enjoy it. This is another one that I only watched for the first time just two or three months back. When I first saw the trailer, I went, oh man, that looks awesome. I can't wait to go see that. Then the reviews came in and they weren't good. So I ended up not watching it until I did my ranking just a few months back. And it, it turned out to be 
to live up to its fairly bad reputation. I don't know, the movie just feels like this bizarre experiment where you have a thin plot that's designed to just string together a series of just stunning visuals. All of these creative outside the box ideas and taking these images from all these different cultures and genres and mashing them all together in a dreamlike way, in which case the movie plays kind of like a two hour music video. It's stunning, but it is exhausting. And for me, it was just tough to care about much of anything that was going on when it was sort of like a metaphor inside of a visualization of a recreation of the events of the previous week. I mean, it is like inception level layers inside of layers, except dreams that are all representing some sort of idea. It looks stunning. It really does. It's very creative in what the visuals are. I can't say that I connect with the story. I can't say that it's one that I'm interested in rewatching. So definitely this one goes at the bottom for me. That will bring us to Man of Steel and Zack Snyder's decade working on DC films. Now, this is an interesting one because the original kind of idea for it came from David Goyer, who was working on The Dark Knight Rises, and he took a week off to think about stuff, came up with an idea for a Superman movie, pitched it to Christopher Nolan, who took it to the WB, and then Zack Snyder ended up being the person they chose to direct the project. So it's a little bit David Goyer, a little bit Christopher Nolan, and then visualized by Zack Snyder. And because of that combination, I was very excited going into this movie but watching the movie at first, I probably on initial viewing would have put it in the ambitious but flawed category. It was good. I liked it. I appreciated what they were going for, but it was just so different. I grew up on the Christopher Reeves film's traditional Superman, and that's not really what this film is. It tries to approach it from a very different perspective, and... It took me a while to warm up to all of that. But then every time I watched it, I liked it a little bit more and a little bit more. So now, certainly without question, I would put it in that great, very good category. As soon as I learned to take it on its own terms and see this interesting study of Kal-El, Clark Kent, raised with two expectations of him on his shoulders. What would he do as the most powerful man on the planet? That's such a character-based journey. All kinds of cool themes interwoven in it. And of course, you do get amazing Zack Snyder visuals. And, you know, for the first time ever, we get 21st century Superman punching people in the face. Structurally, I do think it's a little bit odd it flows strange and I think leads to pacing issues because the the nature of the story shifting so much at like an hour and 20 minute mark and then Zod shows up and it just flows kind of weird. So I don't think it's fully awesome, but it is very good or great. Hey, real quick, before I talk about the final three movies on here, remember to join me down below in the comment section. Let me know, what do you think about Zack Snyder's movies? What do I need to rethink? What am I missing in some of my analysis of some of these films? I'd love to hear your thoughts on all that fun stuff. Also, would you like to see more of these tier rankings, some of these outside the box rankings that are a little bit different from my normal thing? Love to hear your take on it. And also remember to support Austin Burke's channel. His videos right up here and he's done a bunch of these tier rankings and helped teach me how to do them. That'll bring us to Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, probably Zack Snyder's most divisive film. As for me, I've always enjoyed this film. I love Batman and Superman, so seeing them on the big screen together, punching each other in the face and then teaming up, that in and of itself, the novelty of that was enough to make me enjoy this film from when I first watched it. It's certainly a movie that has its flaws though. And I think the big issue here is they were trying to do way too much. In which case you have a movie that's trying to be this exploration of would Superman be accepted as a god or as a danger and how like would that happen? And so then you have Lex Luthor and Bruce Wayne trying to take out Superman, Superman saving people while you have these broadcasts about how he's evil and stuff like that. And so you've got all this stuff going on. Then it's 
our first time with Batman in the DCEU. You have the Batman vs. Superman stuff, and then we're bringing in Wonder Woman, we're teasing Flash, we're teasing Aquaman, Doom stays in it, so you get the death of Superman. It's just a lot of stuff to put into one movie, and it chooses an overly convoluted way to get there. Now, having now watched the Ultimate Edition for the last several years, I would say that the theatrical version is just a misfire because it was, it was chopped to pieces. It doesn't flow. It doesn't make sense. The gimmick of seeing the characters on screen together isn't enough anymore now that I've seen the better full version of the movie. But the Ultimate Edition, I would put in that ambitious but flawed. I really enjoy it. It certainly has its flaws, though. It has a lot of great sequences. The opening with Bruce Wayne charging into Metropolis as it collapses during the finale of Man of Steel. So what it's doing the action, I think it's exciting. The actual plot itself, I mean, it's just too much in there. It's too complex. It's too convoluted. It's trying to accomplish too many things. And because of that, it's not as successful at any one of them. So ambitious, but flawed. That'll bring us to Zack Snyder's Justice League, the holy grail of nerdy films and a project I never thought we would see this complete of a version and certainly not this soon after the original release of the theatrical version. I thought 10, 15 years from now, they would release something somewhere with the limited budget. Instead, we got a version where they put $70 million into it and allowed it to be four hours long and it without question is awesome. It is at the top of the pack. Every single thing about this version is better than the theatrical version. All of these plot points that just seemed rushed and not set up or didn't make sense or didn't pay off emotionally, suddenly the movie pauses, sets everything up, gives every character an arc, makes you care about the details. It was this intricate story, but still a focused story that played out perfectly over this long journey to where when Superman comes back, it means something. When characters make a sacrifice, you feel it. And every single character has an arc with a payoff leading to this epic finale where it has so many awesome superhero moments where there's Superman showing up to save the day and going not impressed and it is awesome awesome flash suddenly actually being important to the finale of the film and turning back time in epic fashion to reverse an explosion that'll destroy everything amazing amazing things this is Zack Snyder's magnum opus where he told this gigantic story and was able to do it right with his visuals, with awesome action sequences, awesome superhero lines, and all the fun stuff that you want in a movie like this. So without question, this one goes in the awesome tier. And finally, Army of the Dead, Zack Snyder's return to the genre of his original film. This time it's a zombie heist film set in Las Vegas and starring Dave Bautista. And this movie is a little bit of all the things that you want from a Zack Snyder film. You've got awesome, visceral, exciting action that's fast paced. You have his choice in music sprinkled all throughout the film. And when you're in Vegas, those sorts of song choices fit really nicely. It has this deep mythology to it, trying to expand kind of what's going on with the zombies and they have a hierarchy and they have relationships that are different than you'd expect them to have. But also as a Zack Snyder movie, it's a bit much. And I feel like this story where would have worked better as like a two hour, hour and 45 minute, fast paced, high octane zombie, zombie heist film, as opposed to a two and a half hour zombie heist epic. Like when I think about Watchmen, Batman v Superman, Zack Snyder's Justice League, those are stories that are so layered and complex and go in so many different directions that it makes sense that they have these huge run times. I look at this movie and I just, I literally don't know where the time went. And that's normally not a good sign. And it's frustrating because it does so many things so well. So many parts of it are very, very cool. 
I like that it's a return to the zombie genre and has all the cool action sequences in this destroyed Las Vegas. That's all very cool, but it's not quite as cool as I think it could have been if it wasn't trying to be so big. So in general, a movie that's ambitious, but flawed in a lot of ways. I really enjoyed it. I had fun with it, but it is a flawed movie and it wasn't as good as I was hoping or thinking that it could be. So to summarize what we have here in the bottom category, ambitious but bad, we have Sucker Punch, a gorgeous movie with very creative visuals, but a story I absolutely do not connect with. In the Misfires category, we have Legends of the Guardians, The Owls of Gahul, a movie that has cool owl fight sequences, but he is just a mismatch when it comes to making a children's movie. Likewise, Batman v Superman, theatrical cut, I would put here as they just chopped the story to pieces. In our ambitious but flawed category, we'll then also have Batman v Superman Ultimate Edition, the full version of it. I do think it is a good film, but it is too convoluted. Army of the Dead, likewise, a bunch of enjoyable zombie stuff that I did like, but I just don't think it needed to be two and a half hours long. In our very good and great category, we have Watchmen, all the different versions of it, but I don't still don't think fully awesome because it's just too difficult to translate Watchmen over to the big screen. Dawn of the Dead, a great zombie film. I love so much about it. I just think a couple parts go a little bit too far. Man of Steel, a great reimagining of Superman. Thoroughly enjoy what it has to offer. Just maybe some pacing issues. But in our awesome category, we have 300, which is a movie, simple concept, executed perfectly. Not going to be for everybody. And then we have Zack Snyder's Justice League, the culmination of everything Zack Snyder had been trying to work on. It is, uh, I think it is his, his best film. There you have it. There is my very first tier ranking of all time. If you want me to do more of these, let me know down below in the comment section. Be sure to check out Austin Burke's tier ranking for the Zack Snyder movies right over there. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much.